stage, Charlotte Tilbury. Welcome, welcome, Wonder Woman. Up she comes. Come along, Wonder Woman of the day. Come and get comfortable. Hello, everybody. It's so exciting crowd. to be here. Gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Tilbury, I have so much to talk to you about. I'm kind of in a massive rush and speed. So yeah. I, what I want to do is, we've seen where you're at now and you've worked with some of the most incredible people in the world. And you are uh, the best makeup artist in the world. One of the maybe three, <laughs> four or five. Um, what I want to do is actually talk to you about where you began and how you started and when you were really young and how makeup influenced your life when you were a child. Because I know that you've been on this path for a long, long time. Many, many, many moons, yeah, 23 years. No, as years. you know, gosh, since I was 13. Okay, okay, so tell us, about, so when you were 13, what's your first memory to do with makeup? What was the first makeup that you used? So the first, um, um, sorry, it's so confusing. Look at you, look at the audience, it's also Look at us all. Um, yeah, okay, basically how it all started was when I was 13 years old, I discovered a pot of mascara. <laughs> and um, I was this little red-haired girl with fair eyelashes, and literally, I promise you, it totally changed my life. It, it just had this, I mean, because I, I went back to Ibiza, I was brought up in Ibiza, um, I was living, I went, living in England, I was at boarding school, I went back and I had mascara on and then everyone literally from the age of sort of, you know, uh, seven to 70 years old was just like, wow, hi, you look different, wow, you look really good. And I suddenly I was like, what, what the hell is going on? And suddenly I'm like, everyone's a bit more poppy, a bit nicer, a bit more fabulous. I was like, this is great. Yeah. It sort of comes out of a tube of mascara. <laughs> and um, so that was really when I, uh, what dawned on me then was the power of makeup. Um, the power of makeup, and it was just, it was breathtaking. And I'd always known it because on my wall at home, I had like posters of Marilyn Monroe, Greta Garbo, whoever it was that I was inspired by. And, you know, just having that kind of moment, always being obsessed with beauty and a woman walking to, into a room and how they could command so much attention. I was fascinated by beauty. And then when that happened to me at 13, I was thinking, was, how can I steal a little bit of that DNA? How can I become the most beautiful version? When I went to boarding school and discovering this kind of makeup moment, because all the English girls were wearing lots of makeup, and then coming back and having that and having all these people react to me in such a different way was so... Uh, first of all, I was a little bit like, really? What, this is a tube from the sky? You're telling me I look so different? But then I was like, wow, this is amazing because everyone's just a little bit... Life is just a bit more... I be instantly became more popular. It's terrible to say, but that's kind of human nature. And if, it's, if it's actually just about <laughs> mascara, like, bring it on. I've been working yeah. far too hard. Now I know it's that easy. <laughs> but in Ibiza at the time when you were a child, were you... Um, were you amongst lots of creative people who were all extremely made up? Was it a crazy party scene or was it actually quite a quiet, low-key kind of a life that you had? It was not low-key, darling. Nothing okay. low-key about my life ever. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, my life was very... I mean, I had an amazing, um, amazing life. I, you know, I actually... That's where I met Mary Greenwell, the makeup artist I eventually ended up assisting um, on a beach when I was 11. And then she's on the cover of... Uh, I, can't, I think it was Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, Jerry Hall and all the rest of it. But, um, and she, you know, and it actually sort of, when I was a little bit older, my mother phoned her up and said, you know, she, I was too scared. I was like, please, can you phone Mary? And, and she said, you know, you can come and go and do a makeup course and then you can come and assist me on whatever I'm doing. But okay. back to Ibiza, because I will ramble yeah, all yeah, over okay, the place. Yeah, okay, all right, just quick Ibiza. <laughs> what was, Ibiza. What was Ibiza like then? Because I actually, I mean, I, I, we've, I've been in Ibiza, yeah. you've been in Ibiza, I've seen, but it's, it's such a different scene now, but to grow up there is actually fascinating. What was it like? No, it was amazing. I mean, but I, you know, we, I, would, I, I went to nightclubs at sort of eight years old. I mean, you know, my parents, it was, it was a different life then. You know, you could do that then. Um, we kind of, you know, I, I would see, you know, James Brown or, or um, um, oh God, uh, anyway, millions and millions, uh, you know, Grace Jones. I mean, you name, I kind of in concert, we'd be swimming in the swimming pool with amazing, these men called the Locomiers with incredible makeup, the outfits. I mean, those days, so the kind of 80s. Be, yeah. It was like, but it, uh, well, it wasn't. It was the Coup Club then. It okay. was called Coup. Amnesia still existed, but um, and you know, people really in those days they really experimented with makeup and clothes, and it was just all about as wild and as dressed up as you possibly could be. And actually, Jean Paul Gaultier used to go to that club, and the women actually would. A lot of the dancers would wear the comb bras, the 1950s underwear, out you know, sort of dancing on pole. So there was so much inspiration, I think, for all of us at that time, and certainly that has influenced a lot of my career. I'm Tonya Lopez, who you know is an amazing, um, you know, artist. I mean, a lot of his inspiration. They all look like those kind of amazing drawings. So that's really influenced you? It's hu hugely influenced me. I and mean, a lot and of your products now actually have Ibiza beach names and everything, which I really love. Well, you, a lot of what I do is basically capturing DNA. So w the reason I became a makeup artist, one of the things is that 
I look at people, whether it's I'm on holiday with my friend Kate Moss, or, I'm, or I see kind of Elle McPherson, or you know, whoever it is that I'm working with, or Giselle, I'm on a photo shoot with her, and often in Ibiza. And I'll be on a beach, and I'll be looking at them, and I'll be going, God, the way that their skin looks on the boat, and it's all sun-kissed and glowing, they've got these kind of russet cheeks, we've on the boat ride, and the kind of the sunset, and the way it's their skin is looking, and I'm like, I want to capture that holiday. I want to capture that holiday. And so that was the reason that I came up with things like beach sticks, because I literally wanted to capture a holiday in January when you're feeling kind of exhausted, grey, and knackered, <laughs> and then literally just kind of be able to put on a, a beach stick, and you literally would have, because it has you know, this whole kind of mix of uh, a formula that it has basically this very kind of thing called um, light flex technology in it. So it does make you look suddenly like you've got this glossy kind of Giselle skin. Okay, well, I want to talk about the, I want to talk about the brand in a, in a minute. What yeah. I want to do first is, even for me, and I've known you for a while, and yeah. I've worked in fashion for a long time, just, just getting to know you more before this talk, I'm astounded quite how much editorial you've done. Yeah. How many, I don't know if people actually understand quite how many Vogue covers and what sort of incredible models Charlotte's worked with. And it's not just that you've worked with them, because a lot of people work with these people, let's be honest, but you've really been part of some of the most transformational covers for people. So yeah, what moments. I wanted to ask you is, what was your first cover? How did you get into editorial? You, worked, you mentioned Mary Greenwell. What was your first and what was that experience like? Well, my first, I mean, God, I don't know where my first cover was, but, you know, I mean, I pretty much work with most celebrities out there, most models out there, but I mean, I've been doing this for 23 years. You know, everyone, um, it sort of started with kind of moments like Isabella Blow was an amazing person that kind of introduced me to Katie Grant. Katie Grant then got me working with Matt and Marcus. I then started working with Mario Testino. I, you know, Lucinda Chambers, Kareem Reutfeld. I mean, I could go on and on, you know, of all the different people that have had um, Edward Enningfall. I mean, so many people, um, you know, Joe McKenna. I mean, I could go on and on. All these people that editors, and photographers that have um, kind of influenced my career or helped me. I'm so privileged to work with such amazing people. But um, really, you know, the, my first, I don't remember when my first book of it was a very long time ago, though. Um, I have, you know, I've been doing, you know, Vogue, Vanity Fair, WV, I mean, you know, millions of covers, runway shows. Um, it's been 23 years. Okay, so the runway shows you do in addition to the editorial. Yeah. And the runway shows, something like Victoria's Secret, I know you do. Yeah. So for that, you decide to look with, the, with those people. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't do it all the time, but I definitely have done it, yeah. Okay, exactly. and you decide to look with the creative director, and then you, and and then you, how long is the process for something like that? How, if you're doing Victoria's Secret, do you meet that morning and say, let's do this? Or are you meeting no. five weeks before and deciding No, we, you, you literally normally with fashion shows, I mean, it's wonderful, you know, fashion shows. I mean, I've worked with everyone from Mutual Prada, Victoria's Secret, Tom Ford. I mean, you know, amazing, amazing people. Basically, what happens is really kind of an exciting process where basically you will meet the designer sometimes, sometimes a week before, sometimes four days before. It depends when the hairdresser, the stylist, and the uh, hairdresser, the stylist, and um, makeup artist and designer can all kind of convene because we've all got these crazy schedules. And then we convene at their studio and often, I mean, Alexander McQueen was one of the greats that I just, you know, that I worked with. I was so lucky and privileged to work with him. But, you know, for instance, working with McQueen, we would, um, you know, I would go to his studio and he would show me this kind of, he, sometimes he would just be like, you know what, um, uh, I, you know, with him it was, it was funny because he'd say, actually, he'd sort of phone me months before and say, I'm thinking about circus. And then actually I'm thinking about witches. Can you create kind of prosthetic noses? So I'd be in my studio. I mean, he, this is quite an extreme case because I don't do but that for many designers. amazing, though, amazing So case. I would sort of, sort of sit there kind of creating witch noses going, really, this is really what he wants. And then he'd suddenly phone me and go, right, you're coming for the test. I want to take you through, you know, and he have like a wall of images. And he'd say, actually, I, 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 last night I saw the Richard Burton film with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. And I feel, and I'm inspired by, you know, Cleopatra and Egypt, and and he'll take you through this kind of whole sort of wall of references that he's sort of, you know, um, pho photocopied and um, and books. And then he'll say, and then he'll say to me, right, you know, I, I want the makeup to be like uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Antony and Cleopatra. And so suddenly we'll be kind of doing, you know, having kind of created a sort of two months before this kind of whole clown witchy kind of book of makeup that I sort of give him. Suddenly we're doing Anthony and Cleopatra kind of, you know, uh, makeup. But it was, you know, it's one of, it's so exciting because what they do is they have these designers take you into their world and into their library of references. So it's really exciting as a makeup artist because they take you on their journey and you kind of are like a bit like a chameleon. So you go into their world. And so it might maybe one day it's Alexander McQueen, the next day it's Tom Ford or, you know, uh, whoever it is that you're working, you know, Donna Karen and you, or whoever I work with, it's kind of, you know, such different kind of extremes. And that in turn, actually, what you're doing on the shows in turn influences editorial, am I right? 
Not always. Not I always. think no. Um, I think editorial. I think sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes like the street inf influences. You know, uh, fashion. Uh, it, I just think it comes from so many. You know, sometimes you often wonder. It's quite interesting actually when you're doing fashion shows. You're sort of thinking. You're working with all these different designers, London, Paris, New York, Milan, and suddenly you're thinking, God, there's a general, there's like a chinoiserie theme this year, for instance. I mean, not that it's, that's happened for a while, but you suddenly think, are people watching s similar films, reading similar books, going to similar exhibitions? Why is that? These people aren't communicating with each other, yet there is a similar kind of theme um, that's sometimes kind of a thread that sort of comes through. Yeah. And um, with your editorial, if you've got a certain, let's say you've got Kim Kardashian, I know you did that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West cover. When you have someone like oh, what, that... What, the cover of Vogue? No, I didn't do that oh, one. Oh, you didn't do no, that I one. No, I didn't oh, do that one. I worked with her many times, but okay, I didn't do that okay, one. Okay, that was on your yeah. on Art Partner. Art Partner. That was why. I was looking at this morning. Um, but if you're doing that, do you have to sit down with the... I hate the word celebrity, but do you have to sit down with that personality and decide what they want? Or are you sitting down solely with the photographer and the editor of the magazine? How much say do celebrities have in their image editorially? You know, celebrities are really kind of wonderful when you're working with really great photographers like Mario Tessino or like Matt and Marcus or whoever it may be that you're working with. I think when they're doing a cover of Vogue, they they understand that you are there because you've spent 20 odd years in, you know, they, there's a trust, there's a respect and there's a trust. And I think that they then allow you and the editor and the photographer to take you on your journey that you want them to kind of, the way that you want to convey them. They know that you want to make them look the most beautiful version. They've all, you know, we've obviously quite often been approved by the celebrity um, and so you because they know that you know often uh, the, the reason I get sort of flown around doing what I'm doing around the world is because they know that they, they're gonna I'm probably gonna make them look the most gorgeous they possibly can look right right <laughs> so um, yeah they're, 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 they're wonderful they do kind of give it up to uh, to us and we but often we'll converse with the stylist with the photographer and say you know we're thinking actually we're sort of thinking 1950s Havana we're thinking whatever it is well, there'll be a theme or a world maybe that we want to go into and and as a library of references in fashion, we all kind of speak a similar language. We understand each other quite quickly because it might be certain vintage films or uh, a movement or whatever it is that we're inspired by. So. And how do you get your inspiration together for that? You have a team who go through books for you, photocopying, or are you off to the cinema on your own? How do you actually build that build that library well, uh, of references? Do you know what? Over the years, I mean, you, you know, I have a, I have an amazing vintage book collection, and you know, you collect them. You know, photographers might there might be a book I haven't heard of or an art book, and then you go and buy it. You order it online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it, uh, it quite often. So much of my life these days is spent, you know, watching planes on the, uh, you know. Uh, either downloading them or in my hotel room or on the plane because I mean, my life is quite So intense. you do travel a lot. How, yeah. as, as a woman, um, uh, and you're a mother as well, Yeah. how do you actually cope with that travelling? Do you love it or is it a means to an end because you love the job or are you actually happy to travel? Because you do travel a lot and I think we all I look loved, on yeah. social media and think, <laughs> my God, how do these people actually get here? Um, no, it's, you know what, I, I have to travel, but I love traveling. My life is so exciting. The fashion industry, um, you know, the beauty industry, what I'm doing now, and I've just come back from, you know, kind of, I just came back from being in Toronto and New York and uh, wherever. I mean, I'm, I'm on a plane constantly, um, but well, not constantly, yeah, every month, yes, I am. <laughs> um, but it's exciting, you know, you get to go to amazing, you know, we're going, I'm going to go and do sort of people for the Met Ball next month. I'm going to go to Cannes and do a bunch of celebrities. I'm going to go, you know, it, it, there's different places you'll get a, to you get a call to a cover of Vogue or Vanity Fair, it might be in the desert, you don't know where you're going to be, but it's, it's, it's exciting and fun. I'm such, I'm so privileged to kind of be in this world where I've seen the world, um, you know, I've traveled the world and I've also been in amazing situations with people that, you know, incredible places, whether it's kind of, you know, the Queen of Jordan's palace or kind of like, you don't know where you're going to end up. You just end up in the kind of craziest places. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to talk about your brand, which you launched, uh, in 2000 and... 13, 14. Yes, 18 months old. Right, 18 months old. And then within that time, you've managed to create a brand that's actually taken the whole beauty world by storm. And I think a lot of people can do a little bit of some editorial or whatever and then want to just stamp their name on a powder compact. But you've actually created a huge, a very, a full brand. I mean, there's so many products within that brand. And you've not only launched it in the UK, you've also launched it in the US. And it's really, really selling fast. So how, how did that idea come about for you and how do you actually go about having an idea and executing it to the point that you have? Well, going back to, you know, I think the reason, I mean, look, I wanted to create, I wanted to create a makeup revolution. I'm a makeup artist at the top of my game, um, but I wanted to come up with something that was properly different. I wanted to disrupt the industry. I wanted to create something. Also, there was a need for it. When I talk about a makeup revolution, I wanted to create something that is easy to choose, easy to use and easy to gift. 
and also from for myself because I wear two hats I'm a creative I'm an expert but I'm also a mother and a working woman and you know all my friends will constantly say to me you know how do I get a smoky eye I can't do it what colors would suit my eyes how do I get that kind of thing that you do on Jennifer Lopez where you kind of like you know you contour and you highlight the skin and that thing that you did on a Vogue cover that thing you did on the red carpet on Penelope Cruz all that you know it was all that look I loved it and I was like I couldn't give it to them because to be honest with you what I was doing was I was like an alchemist often kind of people say to me oh that beige color used on lip on Kate Moss's lip, lips and I'm like yeah but I can't give it to you because actually it's a mix of concealer a couple of lipsticks and something else I'm like and it cracks in five minutes you've got to scrub it off you know basically because I was mixing everything and also it was I had seven suitcases of makeup so you wanted kind of looks that were kind of put together so I created um and I also realized that fashion was so cyclical so if I was creating you know a rock chick look today it might be on Kate Moss or Cara Delevingne or but then you know the rock chicks of the past you were still some doing something similar to kind of you know whether it was you know Marion Faithful and Anita Palenberg Bridget Bardot you realize actually it's not that different or today you'd be doing like you know a Penelope Cruz's look which is kind of you know whatever and then you'd be doing sort of Sophia Loren I mean I wasn't doing Sophia Loren's makeup but you know you realize the Dolce Vita which is the Dolce Vita look and so you realize that these are kind of looks you wanted to kind of package so I created a makeup wardrobe so that literally people could just say you know in, in a way just go right okay those are the eyes that goes with the cheeks that goes go, go with the lips a bit like designers tell you this is a shirt that goes with the skirt that goes with the shoes you know so and women to be sort of Women are meant to come out of the womb sort of expecting to know how to do makeup. I mean, it's yeah. just, you know, it is a real yeah. kind of, it's you know, a pressure. It, it, well, it, yeah. And also, you know, I, my father's an artist. I kind of, you know, I have an eye for that. I've also spent 23 years practicing this, you know, and I really know about, you know, there are certain rules in art, like, you know, the way that you kind of play with shadow and light. You know, you go back to, you know, even like Vermeer, you look at, you know, I'm constantly trying to steal DNA. I'm kind of constantly looking if it's like a Vermeer painting, girl with a pearl earring, like, how do you get that kind of, gorgeous luminous sort of pearlescent skin or or you know just you know whatever I did with you know whether it's Giselle's beautiful skin like I created a product called Wonder Glow Wonder Glow basically I would look at her and just think she's so annoying she wakes up in the morning she's Brazilian and fabulous and she's got that just gorgeous golden glow I want that so I went to the labs you know and it, but this brand was born out of basically me kind of wanting to come up with the wardrobe so that I could say to my friends you want you know, like basically what I just did last night on Kate Moss, here's a rock chick, or, you know, you want kind of the look that I wear all the time, here's a Dolce Vita. That's actually sets that come with makeup, yeah. with eyeliner, lipstick, all the right things for the look. It's just, it's, it's a, the a whole step look, step the kit. eyes, the cheeks, the lips, the yeah. whole look, you get everything. And why has no one done that from the before? <laughs> um, I think that, I don't know why, I don't, you know, I don't know why it's this. One of those kind of things, some, sometimes such an obvious thing is the most successful thing, it's sort of staring in the face and just, well, it hasn't happened. But I think I was viewing it from quite a different standpoint because I was a makeup artist. I'm an expert of what I do I'm not a marketing person so uh, often quite I think in a lot of brands out there people are thinking of it from a marketing point of view I'm actually seeing it from an expert point of view of a, of a need like women will come to me with problems and I want to give them solutions so I want to, and, I, and also I'm a complete and utter perfectionist so when it comes to formula I want formulas that literally almost my five-year-old son could do do you know what I mean like you want a smoky eye I'm gonna give you the most forgiving most fabulous eyeshadow that is out there so that literally you can take two brushes and you just go backwards and forwards like a windscreen wiper and it's gonna give you a perfect smoky eye and I don't say that lightly because let me tell you a lot of um, I you know being a perfectionist there are a lot of formulas out there that are there's too much talc inside them or the the the, the, um, the particles haven't been finely milled enough or there aren't enough emollients inside them so sometimes some people go to put on an eyeshadow and it goes a bit patchy and it, or it drops and they go oh but I can't do it and it's like actually the formula is just not forgiving enough and not easy enough for you to use so making formulas that were so easy but really beautiful so that anyone could use them because actually it was really interesting you know apart from all these women asking me how to get these looks um, and what colors would suit them we actually kind of came up with some research that you know is actually done by Harvard University um, where they would have a woman with and without makeup and they would say well I don't trust her or I would you know I pay her more and all these kind of crazy things well she's more competent and it was just by the way they'd done her makeup now I yeah and so a lot of people that might be kind of alarming but in a way, I come from this world where I, I'm doing red carpet makeup for celebrities. I'm doing the covers of magazines. And I, uh, my passion was to basically give part of that to all women and make it easy for them. That it shouldn't just be the them and us club. They're like, you know, it's just that only because they have makeup artists and hairdressers, so for the red carpet, they can look like that. And then 
uh, the rest of the women are like, I could never look like that. You can look like that. And that was my point, was just to kind of bring all my secrets and my tips and my tricks and put them into, you know, I'm basically doing myself out of a job. <laughs> I'm giving it all away now. Um, but literally, is, you know, to be able to package it in a way that was so easy that anyone could basically do it. It's like, I never forget when I first, actually, I think it was Kate Mills, when I first gave her one of my eyeshadows and the two brushes, she went, this is really easy. You make it look like, like now, you know, it's like, yeah. I don't really we need, don't need you, you anymore. You anymore. But are you, um, are you in a laboratory in your lab coat testing potions and lotions? How, how much of your time is spent doing that to create those formulas? Um, you know, I, I'm in, I've been in a very privileged position, actually. And, you know, for years and years, I've been working with the laboratories. I mean, I've, I've always kept on the telly. I've, been work, I've had that for 15 years. Um, I've been a creative director of many brands. Some I can and can't mention. Most of them out there in the marketplace. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, on a lot of kind of big mega brands. And uh, so I've been in this very privileged position where I've been sent a lot of blue sky formulas way three, four, five years before they're even on the market. What do you think of this? It's not stabilized. It's not approved. It's not, you know... What do you think? Would you think this is? And so I've been in this amazing position and I still have those kind of relationships with the laboratory. So, you know, so you're in there. yeah, right in there. I'm like, give it to me first. I want it. Exactly. This is amazing. So but when, you're, I, you when know, you've yeah. got a brand and you've got, you need to get your brand out there. I, I, I look at you as a sort of really exemplary. You've used social media very well. I want to talk a little bit about that. Because yeah. you've used social media very well to reach out to your customers, your fans. What does... Um, how important is it for you to to use your social media? How else would you have got all these fans? Because you have a huge following. I think, you know, I think social media, I mean, I, I love social media. I love it for so many different reasons. It's a direct portal. It's a direct voice to your audience. It's a two-way conversation in the palm of your hand. I think that, you know, YouTube, uh, I mean, you know, I think it's... It, you I have a great YouTube I, channel, I, I, right. you know, I, Exactly, and that was, that was amazing. I mean, when I, before I started, I was like, you know, we started doing these tutorials and I was like, I cannot do a face without my magic cream. I don't know if you know about my magic cream, but my magic cream is like something that I, is a moisturizer that I had created backstage. This is like for 22, it's part of the reason I became successful because everyone was like, I was known for amazing skin almost before I was known for amazing makeup. Like, you know, I would do, and so I would use this magic cream and I would mix it up backstage and then literally it became known as Get Charlotte's Secret Magic Cream and the makeup artists and the celebrities and, the, and, and everyone, the models would be like, and this would be at the fashion shows because the skin would be really kind of traumatized after all the on and off makeup. And I'd be like, no, 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 you're not taking my magic cream. And then so literally, then sometimes like, they literally like have me up against, like, give me a pot. And I'd be like, okay, so then I give, if I really loved you, I'd give you a little kind of my secret pot of cream. Um, but that is, so the, the magic cream, where was I? I've gone social media. social media, thank you. So social media, when we first started, um, I was, you know, I, I was saying, okay, I want to do these YouTube videos, but I can't do them without my magic cream. So I didn't have my brand, right? So I was starting with other, using other things. And then, we, I started using the magic cream, then people saw, and I recommend every other product in the world, but I just was like, but I'm using my secret magic cream. And then I kind of did this countdown to kind of launching. And then there were like 200 people queuing outside Selfridges, and we sold, you know, it was like, it just went nuts. We kind of blew a record in Selfridges in the first day of launch. And, you know, I mean, Magic Cream also in America kind of like sold out in six minutes online when we launched it there. And it's just kind of, you know, but it, that's a way in which we use social media. It's a direct channel to be able to talk to people and they see the effect of like, it's not me just saying this is really amazing. They can see the effect it has on the skin or whether you're using, you know, um, you know, a diary of your life with Instagram or Pinterest is a kind of mood board of like what you're inspired by or Twitter where you can have a two-way conversation. I mean, it's just so wonderful and exciting to be able to have that with people. Because often, a lot of the time when you're doing TV or you're doing um, magazines, it's fantastic and I adore them and that's how I've become what I've become. But they've got a limited time and a limited amount of pages, so you can just bang on forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and well, you can share a lot of your secrets and tricks and you know with with everybody. And, and actually, I was going to ask with the American market and the English market because you're very very active in America and you obviously have quite a lot of one on one relationship with your customers. I mean, you yeah. go, you've just been in Dallas, for example, at Nordstrom. Yeah. Here you're stocked in Selfridges, Fennec, and you're you're not just putting a product out there. You're actually arriving yourself and doing amazing launches and stuff. What is the difference in America versus England and how they receive you and how they receive your product? Is there something? Is it, is it different in America? Do they want more? Do they want less? Do they, are they more I think, forthcoming? Uh, I, just, I think I mean, there's an interesting bit of research where we kind of did this research where 50% of women in England do not engage with makeup, hence my passion with this brand. Because I feel there is no woman in the world that does not look better with just a little bit of makeup. You might be the natural girl, but just a little bit of makeup. Everyone needs it. And, um, and, and I think that, 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 that in America, it's less. 
So they understand makeup a little bit more. They engage with makeup a little bit more. But I have to say, it was just wonderful wherever I go. The response to this brand, I mean, England has been so amazing to me. And I mean, I love England. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we love England. Okay, we are going to open up now for and audience Q&A. I love America, we love, all, but we love America, <laughs> love America. Um, we're going to open up for audience Q&A. If you have a question for Charlotte, just raise your hand and I will, uh, someone will pass you a microphone. You seem not to stop. You seem to be on the go all the time, Charlotte. And oh, there you are. <laughs> um, especially after you gave birth to your, to your last child. What's the best and the worst things about being so busy all the time? I don't know, I'm obviously a bit of an adrenaline junkie. I love being so busy. Uh, I think there's not enough hours in the day. I, there's just not enough hours in the day. But I kind of probably, uh, I sometimes wish you could sort of slow it down a little bit. Um, but I managed to sort of pack a lot in. And, you know, if I have to take my children on the road, then they come on the road with me. And whatever we do, we kind of make it work. I think it's really important in life. I think, you know what, you can have it all in life. Why not? I just think, you know, sometimes you're tired, but makeup, makeup can hide everything. So, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and, you know, my goddess skin clay mask can hide more. It's terrible. You know, it's like the more I kind of invent fabulous skincare products, the more I think, oh, I can stay out a little bit later. I can be a little bit naughtier. Um, but I think, you know, it's important to be able to kind of enjoy life to the full. I think it's really important that you see your friends, really important that you have fun doing whatever you're doing. I work incredibly hard, but I try to enjoy every moment as much as I can because it's too boring if life is just like too much hard work. You've got to make it fun. Thank you. You seem to have massed an incredible team. Would you say that you're, as a businesswoman, very good at delegating? And would you say that delegating is, is the most important part of business? I think delegating is a hugely important part of business. I think it's, you know, difficult sometimes for a control freak like me, just being honest. <laughs> um, you know, but I have an amazing team of people. Um, I, I'm really fortunate. And, I, and actually, they think like me. I just, you know, they, they kind of, we all have a similar vision and how we think about things we kind of we you know it's like uh, it's just that revolutionary different way of thinking of just and, and they're, they're committed to working to thinking out of the box but that's because you're a good leader i mean i really i can say i've examined quite i've worked for lots of companies but if you're conveying what you want done and your vision clearly then then the passion there to kind of do what you say is it, it's that's credit to you. Thank you. Well, they do often say, I do, I do, in the business world, I think it always comes from the top. Not to say, you know, I think if it's how you lead a company or how you want it to be, and then you have to employ genius, brilliant people because, you know, I mean, I can't create this brand totally on my own. I've got amazing people that work for me on every department. So, but it is, but I think it is, you know, I think if you get, you give them the freedom to be entrepreneurial, to be brilliant, to shine in every respect, to come up with brilliant ideas, then, then hopefully that's what I, you know, I hope that's what I try and do. I'm certainly, but I am, a, you know, it, it is sometimes like, oh, you know, it's that kind of perfectionist thing, but it's wonderful. It's a wonderful rapport and I love to be challenged. I love to be challenged. Okay. Okay. We have more, some more questions. Uh, oh, quite a lot of hands. Okay. We have a lady just sitting at the back here. I can't imagine you or Mary Greenwell or people like Le Lisa Eldridge ever kind of slowing down or, or kind of stopping um, for a long time. But do you see people that you've got your eye on in the industry who are up and coming, even makeup or hair, that you think, you know, they're being really innovative and people to keep your eye on? I think there are uh, lots of people out there doing amazing, amazing things. I mean, it's tough to say. I, I you know, it's tough to say who or what or how. I think there are genius people in lots of kind of different mediums. And I think, of course, there's going to be other stars rising all the time. I think social media, I think, you know, I think uh, social media has kind of, you know, given people uh, a huge uh, kind of portal in a way to, 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 to be able to express themselves in different ways. Um, when you worked for Mary Greenwell, what, what kind of jobs were you doing? What opportunities did she give you to give you the confidence to go and do what you did? As it was like an apprenticeship. It's an right? apprenticeship. So you're learning from a great makeup artist and you're there and you're there with all the supermodels where it's Cindy, you know, Naomi, Claudia Schiffer, whoever, all these amazing beauties, Linda Evangelista, and you're there doing, assisting her doing shows and you're doing some of their makeup with and her. And do you, do you believe in the whole apprenticeship situation can you can you bring that into your own company is it something that you want to yeah I, absolutely I think you know everything in life the more you do practice makes perfect that old saying but the more you do the better you become and when you are with someone and you're learning you're sitting there just watching her move her brushes and how she's mixing colors and what she's doing with certain shades it was just it was, I've learned so much from her and then being and feeling more confident seeing her doing it on these amazing supermodels at the time at the age of 19 was just it gives you empowerment and confidence to see that happening in real time otherwise you'd be terrified by the time you go on to a shoot because you've You've actually been in those situations backstage, you've been on photo shoots, so it gives you confidence to be able to handle those situations or how they would possibly be, as well as learning from a great artist. Yeah, 
great artist as she is. Yeah. That, sorry, was, did you want to ask anyone? No, that's okay. Thank you for your question. Okay, we have. I think there was someone Thank behind. You. If you want to just pass that microphone back, that would be great. Hi. Hi. So, um, I feel like over the past few years, the beauty industry has been like come to the forefront. It's not so much of an afterthought. It used to be an afterthought, like fashion would come and then beauty. Where do you think it's gonna go as it? as the years go on and also what do you think of YouTube and social media and the bloggers and what they've done for beauty as well? I think it's fantastic what they've done for beauty because I think, you know, in a way there was such a, you know, I come from that world and it's partly what I'm doing of like the them and us and so I think so many women didn't know how to put on makeup and I think it's wonderful that they are showing women how to put on makeup, you know, whether it's in their bedroom and they're going, I found this new product and look and I'm playing with it and I'm doing this, that and the other with it. So I think it's fantastic, you know, I, and I think that they have helped bring beauty to the forefront and, um, and view it differently. And I think, you know, beauty is the most powerful thing, you know, uh, for women. And actually, I, you know, I'm obsessed with men in makeup or men in certain skincare. You know, I just think, poor things, they don't have the kind of secret weapons we have. They need the magic cream. Yeah, they need, exactly, well, they, trust me. Do they so, buy it? Trust me. Okay. So many men buy the magic cream. And one of the biggest arguments that I know from so many women is the men putting their great big paws in the pot and putting it all on. <laughs> yeah. <It's, laughs> absolutely, everyone needs it. And the Goddess Skin Clay Mask, loads of men using that as well. Yeah, no, why shouldn't they have a bit of that? You know, I just think it's, um, and I, I just think that, you know, beauty is, it is powerful. It's very, very powerful. I think also I've seen beauty become kind of valid, uh, con considered as valid accessories to life. I mean, yeah. it's not just a kind of, do, like doing your teeth in the morning. It's actually something that you buy and that you treasure. And even if you can afford one lipstick, it kind of adds to your whole lifestyle and adds to your whole confidence I think yeah and I'm, that never used to be I mean if you think of Avon door-to-door -door selling maybe that was kind of the beginning of beauty being something but that I, would brought people together yeah oh I often think I mean I talk about covetable moments like I often think of those kind of like you know Marilyn Monroe moments where they could sort of take out the kind of you know the, the compact and the lipstick moment and I wanted I do feel that makeup the, the kind of the, the makeup or the beauty industry had become quite homogenized everything was quite sort of black rubberized standardized I was like what happened to all those amazing vintage, beautiful compacts that were just so divine? They were like beautiful done, accessories. Um, you've done a, uh, you've used Norman Parkinson's images on some I have. of your compacts. What's that, what's that about? Oh, what's so, that uh, yeah, it's, it's a Norman Parkinson. Um, so that was really amazing. That was, uh, you know, I'm friends with his grandson. Actually, that was a really, uh, that was a proper um, modern kind of uh, relationship because he saw a picture that I posted on my Instagram of Jerry Hall. And then he was like, you know, I see that you're posting a lot of my father's image, my grandfather's images. And I was like, yeah, I'm a massive fan. And he said, do you want to come and see the archive? And I was like, are you, you know, is the Pope Catholic? I mean, do I, you know, do I want to come and see the kind of, you know, um, archive? And, um, and so I went down there and literally it was just this, I mean, I was just in heaven. And then I was like, oh my God, these images. And one of those images, it was a 1975 Vogue cover that I'd done with her. Um, I'd done, not done with her, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done with that. And, uh, but it was something that had always been on my mood boards, no matter what I was okay. creating. So whenever I was creating for other brands or myself, whatever, it was just one of those images that always, always had been there. And I was like, would you ever think about putting this on a compact? And he's like, I really was, you know, love what you're doing. I know that you'll respect because of your heritage and, you know, what you're doing in the fashion industry. I know that you will respect these images in the way that we want them to be respected. And um, so he allowed me to put it on. I mean, it's like a dream come true. He allowed me to put them on compacts and makeup bags. And so it's coming out in July. Yeah, it's super, super exciting. It's a great idea. It's so, yeah, no, I mean, to have yeah. one of the greats, you know, a photographer like that, I kind of think it's a first. I, 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 it is a first. I have and it a great. Makes, it makes the item know. so covetable. It's yeah. not just makeup. It's sort of. It's again. It's an accessory. Yeah, it is. And so it, you know, it, I'm very, very fortunate and lucky because I, a lot of photographers are very. And the archive are very protective about what they do. You know, they wouldn't just. They've been asked millions of times by m many people to put um, their their pictures on on different products, and they were very, you know, adamant about not doing it and so I was very privileged and lucky um, to be in that position to have that and they are you know they're going to be collector's items absolutely and you know even things that we did like you know my film star bronze and glow um, you, that you put on you today which is the kind of showing you how to basically contour your face but in a really easy fashion it's the thing that kind of I did on Jennifer Lopez and I'm Lily. literally wearing it for every day for the rest of my life but, but, that, literally. but li <laughs> it is but it's one of those products that literally I don't know I don't know um, you know a celebrity or a model or a makeup artist or anyone I know that literally that's the one thing that they all have but they it's got that beautiful vintage kind of starburst mm. compact in it and I wanted something you would take out of your makeup bag not only would make you look fabulous and kind of sun-kissed and heavenly and kind of glowy and sort of sculpted but also have that beautiful moment of sort of having something quite fabulous like a beautiful accessory yeah okay we have more questions I don't know I'm gonna have to wrap up quite soon because I could talk forever okay lady here 
Hi, um, Hi. I own quite a lot of your products, which oh, I think are fantastic. Love you. <laughs> um, but um, I'm also quite obsessed by skincare, mm. and I know you recently launched your clay mask. Yes. Um, so are you looking to expand on that aspect of your range? or? I will always, I'm obsessed with skin. I always say, this is my thing. If you don't have a beautiful painting, I mean, sorry, if you don't have a beautiful canvas, <laughs> you are not going to create a beautiful painting. But it, it's that, if you, you know, prepping your skin is just as important as the makeup. It's, it, it really is. It's like the magic cream, the kind of goddess skin clay mask, when you put that on, you can, that was, you know, partly why I became kind of well known for what I do is that people would come off planes. We, we all live in a world where we're constantly dehydrated, we're tired, we're exhausted, and you want something that's literally going to turn around your skin, and that's what they do. They literally, they're like magic. They just turn around your skin. Just suddenly, it's glowing, it's plumped, it's full of moisture. I mean, it's, and so I, I, as long as I can keep finding amazing, I'll never just do something for the sake of doing it. It has to. Everything in my in my brand has to earn its place. So if I find amazing technology, or, you know, I work with incredible labs, and if I find something that I think is truly brilliant and can, you know, can basically, I, I can't find it anywhere can else. Can you make a fake makeup. turn, please, next? If I can find yeah, the right please. fake turn, I will. And, and Ibiza, Ibiza Giselle fake <laughs> turn. Turned. I mean, well, I, well, you know, the supermodel body that I created for the, but there was something that you know that. Oh yeah, which I'm yeah, mostly wearing. Exactly, yeah. supermodel body. That is, you know, that's something that I created backstage when I was doing the Victoria's Secret fashion shows. And the girls, even though they've got these incredible bodies, they sort of wanted an amazing sort of like contouring and highlighting to kind of make them sort of look leaner and longer and kind of glossed and contoured, um, almost as if they were wearing a kind of fake pair of tights, um, you know, sort of sheer tights. And we would erect this tent and kind of, you know, be there with sort of, you know, highlighters and bronzing and God knows what for like 45 minutes before they would go on. And I was, I went to the labs and I was like, you know what, I would really love something that I could just, you know, because when your face is beautifully done, you want this kind of glossy, fabulous body, but you don't want it to come off on your clothes. And so it took four years to develop this. Okay. It does not take, come off on your clothes. It has a roller system. So when your husband's going, come on, we're leaving the house. You can literally be like, whoosh, 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 and you're done. <laughs> and you literally look like you're wearing kind of like a fake pair of kind of, you know, those fabulous sort of like, you know, sheer kind of like tall, you know, tights. And they just make you, they sort of like, the, they just do make you look sort of, you know, plumper and sheenier, gorgeous celebrity skin. Kim Kardashian had it all over her body at the, um, Grammys. Okay, well, there you go. Um, on the Victoria's Secret front, can I ask you, in terms of all those models prepping to walk down that catwalk as naked as they are, how much preparation is that for a model, would you say? I mean, we all see these... Well, is, are the models there for six hours getting ready, or are they there for 20 minutes for something like Victoria's Secret? I'm so interested in is the prep for these things. <laughs> we, only see the, we only see the end result. Most fashion shows... You see I mean, the behind. Yeah, no, most fashion shows, I mean, everywhere in the world, you know, London, Paris, New York, Milan, not only that show, but, you know, most of fashion shows, you have a call time of three hours. If it's a very a particular show, like a kind of McQueen show, it depends how elaborate the makeup is, it can be up to five hours. So it depends what fashion show you're doing. And that, did you do the Vogue cover that's out now with Cara Delevingne? I and did, Siki yeah. Siki Siki Waterhouse Siki Waterhouse, Waterhouse. yeah. So when you've got three girls like that, are you doing all three or you have a, you bring a team so of assistants? No, I bring a team of, so I have my first assistant I travel with everywhere, Sophie Bermuda, she's amazing. And Fierce she, she yes, fabulous. And she um, will come with me everywhere. So she will be there. And then if we've had three girls and I'll have another assistant, then they'll be going, right, okay, I want this look, this look. Then I'll be finishing one, then they'll be prepping another. And then I'll basically either go off and finish it off. So basically I've got my hand on everything, but they're amazing. They've been with me for so long. They're totally trained up. We have the same language. We talk the same, you know. So and you probably have that with someone like Mario as well as someone as a collaborator yeah. you work with so many times yeah. do you when you get commissioned to do something like a Vogue cover do you call him immediately and say I'm what are we thinking woodland fairies or you know <laughs> yeah. crazy butterflies yeah. or do you just arrive on the day and say right everybody what's the vibe no I mean that's kind of the pressure of it and sometimes it's very exciting very challenging it's sort of like you get them I work with Lucinda Chambers with the, the, the fashion editor on that and she's brilliant such an inspiration and so is Mario and Lucinda very much had a vision and Mario very much had a vision of like how they wanted to look and um, they, she was like you know I just think you know a little bit of eye you know how you kind of make the eyes kind of Charlotte how you elongate them give them a bit of a feline flick but then kind of neutrals and then I think we're going to wear all these kind of powdery pop colours of sort of inside so there was the cover and there was the story inside and then we wanted to kind of go for those sort of kind of fabulous kind of bright ice creamy kind of you know pastels and so and does do someone like Cara just do what she's told and take what you, or she trusts you or does she do those girls at the time actually have a say 
Uh, you know what? They, again, are they models? They, they, no, they, they, they are, they are their, their models and personalities and whatever, but I think there's, there's such a respect and such a trust that they know that they're in really good hands and that they're, you know, and they, 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 so they love it. They're like, oh, darling, fabulous. And they look in the mirror and it's beautiful and we all have a fabulous day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you also, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm asking you so many questions. Do we have time for yeah. this? One more thing. Yeah. When you launched your House of Rock and Call and Selfridges and you had Cara doing all the drumming. Drumming, yeah. For me, that's such a clever, you're, you're so brilliant at that kind of promotion or you have yeah. like branded taxis and British London taxis in Dallas. Yeah. Do you come up with those ideas? I'm obviously thinking you do. <laughs> um, how do you actually execute that and what do you think that brings to a brand? How do you get Cara Delevingne on the drums well, because in not many, to launch a brand? How do you do that? Not, not many people. A, she's a friend of mine, so I'm very lucky. Um, you know, I'm very lucky. I know a lot of these people. I hang out with them. I see them, you know. Uh, but not a lot of people knew that Cara could drum. I just she's happened so to know that she it. could drum. It. Half her friends didn't so even know that amazing. she could drum. I mean, because this was back then. So, yeah. you know, it was a few years ago. They, they didn't know. So I said, I phoned her up and I was like, do you know what, darling, would you come? And she was in Greece. I was like, would you, would you play the drums for me? <laughs> would you do it? And she's like, yeah, OK, great. And so we, so she was like, you know, she was so sweet. She got, you know, cut her holiday short, got off a plane, came, played the drums. It was really amazing. Well. Like, yeah, you really well. Really well. She's an amazing. Really you know, she's, well. a, she's a talented singer. She's, a, you know, she's a, she plays the drums. I mean, act. God, what can't that girl do? But anyway, you know, it was it was that. But I, I know a lot about different people, and I look, and I also want to kind of think out of the box and also bring a lot of kind of my backstage world and give it to people in a yeah. kind of different way. Or you know, yeah. and like bring a bit of England to kind of Dallas. It's fun. The Tilbury taxis. You know, it's sort of you know, it's just and do things differently and make it fun make it exciting I think what I really like about your whole vibe is it's very it's very inclusive as opposed to exclusive yes. there's so many brands that kind of say oh we're the top one percent and you can't reach us and you're unattainable whereas you're very very inclusive and yet you still may have got that quality and I sound now like a complete psychophant but anyway you you love it you love are, it carry on carry I on, do on going, feel, love it. I do feel very involved I'm <laughs> invited to belong to your world much more than maybe some of the other brands well, I really a hope bit, a little bit more distant I really hope because that's what for me it's all about all women and making all women look gorgeous and you know what if one woman, I feel that I would have really succeeded if basically, uh, you know, I say my motto is give a woman the right makeup and she can conquer the world. And I truly believe that it happened to me. And my, ma my husband's never seen me without makeup. So literally, I sleep in this stuff. Really? <laughs> you know, I've always got an eye on. My skin comes off and the Wonder Glow goes on, the magic cream. But, you know, but I always have a bit of an eye on. But, you know, I think that if you can you know, give a woman a little bit of makeup, it, they, it gives them confidence and they kind of, that you look good, you feel better. It's just a fact. And, you know, I've been, on, I've been on photo shoots at 12 at night, exhausted, and then sort of looked in the mirror and thought, oh, I haven't touched on my makeup since the morning. And then I think, oh, I'll just put a little bit on, you know, because I'm drained, I'm exhausted. They'll put, I'll paint the color in, I'll hide away the bags, I'll lift the eyes, and I'll just like, you know, paint. And then I look in the mirror and I go, oh. I look I, amazing. I look so much better. And then I literally have more energy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of, no, it is I that. Can it's see. A, you know, call it placebo effect, call it what you want. It's, it's, hugely okay I am I, I know we have to wrap up we have time for one more question because I've asked so many myself okay lady here and then we'll have one lady there and then I think we're gonna have to wrap up hi um, just to go back to your packaging for just a sec yes I just want to know how did you come up with the packaging that you did with the maroon and the rose gold because it's so beautiful oh and also thank you just to be cheeky yeah uh, are you thinking about opening your own makeup store good question <laughs> there's up. so yes, do many it. exciting do it, do it. things coming there's so many exciting things coming you know i i um how did i come up with the rose gold and the those are just colors if you come to my house you'll see them everywhere it's like you know it's i just love that kind of the color of that color that night crimson color is the color of passion it's sort of you know it's sort of hedonistic and naughty and exciting and it just it's one of those colors that just you know love it just it reminds me of all those different things. I wanted something chic as well. I also think it's a very chic color. And I just didn't want to do something black. And, um, and then rose gold, I just think, you know, I think gold is also, again, it has that halo effect. It's beautiful, it's dreamy. And rose gold also kind of is a little bit like the color of, I have bits of gold in my hair. You know, it's like that kind of, it just, it, it's, it, it's just a dreamy, again, a dreamy color and something that, you know, again, you'll see bits of in my house. And it's sort of, those are two colors that are very, Probably having red hair has got a lot to do with it. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so, sorry, what was okay, the other? And then the shop. And the shop, the shop, the shop. Um, I don't shop. know what I'm, I'm not I'm, saying exactly. the shop like I know anything, exactly. but like no. the idea of a shop. The, there's, there's, I'm not going to say anything, but there's a lot of exciting. Just keep posting because there's so many exciting things coming. I feel like that is there must be a natural progression for you, and I hope you start in London <laughs> or in for America. Okay, <laughs> lady there, one more, and then I know that we have to finish. Hi, Charlotte. Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, You've worked on so many famous faces. Is there anyone that you've not worked on? 
The and queen. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Free space the would you choose? I want to work on the queen. I'm sure we can arrange that. Whoever's <laughs> listening. Come on, get on it. Buckingham Palace. <laughs> yeah. She'll do wonders. You, whose space would you choose and what would you do to it and why? So who would I choose and what would I do to it and why? I mean, the Queen, I think she's just iconic and brilliant and amazing. I really do. And I really do. I'm not joking. I really want to do her makeup. I'm so desperate to do her makeup. And also, we've got a fabulous red carpet red lipstick that is a matte colour that would just look on her lips, would just look divine. Come on, Queen. Like those 1930s pictures. Honestly, honestly, it's like literally something that's kind of almost a bit inspired by her. Because you know those 1930s photographs where you sort of see her lips kind of painted in that like sort of beautiful kind of red that it's they're sort of hand painted in? And that red carpet red is very much inspired by that. So I'm desperate to get put that okay. on her lips and do her makeup. But I think she's just a, such an incredible character. I think she's amazing. I think what she's done for this country. And, uh, you know, I think she's just, yeah. Um, on that note, you did, can I, we did see it, so we're allowed to say, but you did Amal Clooney's makeup yes. for her wedding. Yes. Something like that, are you, um, you're obviously, you're very hands-on, you're there, yeah. you, you prep, you rehearse. It's all, it's a huge job. Do you get nervous before something like that, or is that just the easiest thing? No, I think you're that you're in it's an, such in, a spotlight. Uh, yeah, on, you're, on it's you an intimate motor, a moment for anybody. But you're so exciting. It's yeah. such a privilege to be with anyone. I've done, you know, I've done quite a few wedding makeups and sort of Kate Mosses and the Miles and um, you know uh, Poppy Delevingne. I mean, you know, I've been in amazing yeah. kind of times like that, and it's just such a privilege and an honour to be at that most intimate moment, literally probably they're just just their family or their loved ones and you know and then you you yeah. know yeah. um and uh it's, it's it's amazing it's so exciting and brilliant and i just yeah those that's the amazing thing about my job is i do get to be in these incredible things it's not i wouldn't usually okay you well know. you deserve it is all i can say <laughs> we're gonna have thank to end you. because we've gone way over time which i thought we might <laughs> thank you all so much for coming we yes. really really love having you all and just a huge thanks to charlotte you are so so talented you also make it thank you thank you so much and thank you thank you for being and such amazing i will interview. be wearing the makeup forever thank you so <laughs> much thank you thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you but that's kind of human nature and if it's if it's actually just about <laughs> mascara like bring it on i've been working yeah. far too hard now i know it's that easy <laughs> But in Ibiza at the time when you were a child, were you, um, were you amongst lots of creative people who were all extremely made up? Was it a crazy party scene or was it actually quite a quiet, low-key kind of a life that you had? It was not low-key, darling. Nothing okay. low-key about my life ever. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, no, my life was very, I mean, I had an amazing, um, amazing life. I, you know, I actually, that's where I met Mary Greenwell, the makeup artist I eventually ended up assisting um, on a beach when I was 11. And then she's done the cover of, uh, I, can't remember, I think it was Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, Jerry Hall and all the rest of it. But, um, and she, you know, and it actually sort of, when I was a little bit older, my mother phoned her up and said, you know, she, I was too scared. I was like, please, can you phone Mary? And, and she said, you know, you can come and go and do a makeup course and then you can come and assist me on whatever I'm doing. But okay. back to Ibiza, because I will ramble yeah, all yeah, over okay, the place. Yeah, okay, all right, just quick Ibiza. <laughs> what was, Ibiza. What was Ibiza like then? Because I actually, I mean, I, I, we've, I've been in Ibiza, yeah. you've been in Ibiza, I've seen, but it's, it's such a different scene now, but to grow up there is actually fascinating. What was it like? No, it was amazing. I mean, but I, you know, we, I would, I, I went to nightclubs at sort of eight years old. I mean, you know, my parents. It was, it was a different life then. You know, you could do that then. Um, we kind of, you know, I, I would see, you know, James Brown or, or um, up in Ibiza. Um, I was living, I went living in England. I was at boarding school. I went back and. I had mascara on, and then everyone literally from the age of sort of, you know, uh, seven to 70 years old was just like, wow, hi, you look different. Wow, you look really good. And I suddenly was like, what, what the hell is going on? And suddenly I'm like, everyone's a bit more popular, a bit nicer, a bit more fabulous. I was like, this is great. Yeah. It sort of comes out of a tube of mascara. <laughs> and um, so that was really when I, uh, what dawned on me then was the power of makeup. Um, the power of makeup, and it was just, it was breathtaking. And I'd always known it because on my wall at home, I had like posters of Marilyn Monroe, Greta Garbo, whoever it was that I was inspired by. And, you know, just having that kind of moment, always being obsessed with beauty and a woman walking to, into a room and how they could command so much attention. I was fascinated by beauty. And then when that happened to me at 13, I was thinking, was, how can I steal a little bit of that DNA? How can I become the most beautiful version? When I went to boarding school and discovering this kind of makeup moment, because all the English girls were wearing lots of makeup, and then coming back and having that and having all these people react to me in such a different way was so... Uh, first of all, I was a little bit like, really? What, this is a tube from a scar? You're telling me I look so different? But then I was like, wow, this is amazing because everyone's just a little bit... Life is just a bit more 
I be instantly became more popular. It's terrible to say. <laughs> the way it's, their skin is looking, and I'm like, I want to capture that holiday. I want to capture that holiday. And so that was the reason that I came up with things like beach sticks, because I literally wanted to capture a holiday in January when you're feeling kind of exhausted, grey, and knackered. <laughs> and then literally just kind of be able to put on a, a beach stick, and you literally would have, because it has, you know, this whole kind of mix of uh, a formula that it has basically this very kind of thing called um, light flex technology in it. So it does make you look suddenly like you've got this glossy kind of Giselle skin. Okay, well, I want to talk about the, I want to talk about the brand in a, in a minute. What yeah. I want to do first is, even for me, and I've known you for a while, and yeah. I've worked in fashion for a long time, just, just getting to know you more before this talk, I'm astounded quite how much editorial you've done. Yeah. How many, I don't know if people actually understand quite how many Vogue covers and what sort of incredible models Charlotte's worked with. And it's not just that you've worked with them, because a lot of people work with these people, let's be honest, but you've really been part of some of the most transformational covers for people. So yeah, what moments. I wanted to ask you is, what was your first cover? How did you get into editorial? You, worked, you mentioned Mary Greenwell. What was your first and what was that experience like? Well, my first, I mean, God, I don't know where my first cover was, but, you know, I mean, I pretty much work with most celebrities out there, most models out there, but I mean, I've been doing this for 23 years. You know, everyone, um, it sort of started. On the stage, Charlotte Tilbury. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Wonder Woman. Up she comes. Come along, Wonder Woman of the day. Come and get comfortable. Hello, Very everybody. It's so exciting crowd. to be here, gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Tilbury, I have so much to talk to you about. I'm kind of in a massive rush and speed. So yeah. I, what I want to do is, we've seen where you're at now and you've worked with some of the most incredible people in the world. And you are uh, the best makeup artist in the world. One of the maybe three, <laughs> four or five. Um, what I want to do is actually talk to you about where you began and how you started and when you were really young and how makeup influenced your life when you were a child. Because I know that you've been on this path for a long, long time. Many, many, many moons, yeah, 23 years. No, as years. you know, gosh, since I was 13. Okay, okay, so tell us, about, so when you were 13, what's your first memory to do with makeup? What was the first makeup that you used? So the first, um, um, sorry, it's so confusing, look at you, look at the audience, is also exciting. Look at us all. Um, yeah, okay, basically how it all started was when I was 13 years old, I discovered a pot of mascara. <laughs> and um, I was this little red haired girl with fair eyelashes and literally, I promise you, it totally changed my life. It, it just had this, I mean, because I, I went back to Ibiza, I was born, uh, um, oh God, uh, anyway, millions and millions, uh, you know, Grace Jones, I mean, you name it, I kind of in concert, we'd be swimming in the swimming pool with amazing, these men called the Lockermeers with incredible makeup, the outfits, I mean, those days, so the kind of 80s, be, yeah, it was manumission. like, but it, uh, well, it wasn't, it was the Coo Club then, it okay. was called Coo, Amnesia still existed, but, um, and you know, people really, in those days, they really experimented with makeup and clothes, and it was just all about as wild and as dressed up as you possibly could be, and actually Jean-Paul Gaultier used to go to that club, and the women actually would, a lot of the dancers would wear the Cobra, the 1950s underwear, out, you know, sort of dancing on pole. So there's so much inspiration, I think, for all of us at that time. And certainly that has influenced a lot of my career. I'm Tonya Lopez, who, you know, is an amazing, um, you know, artist. I mean, a lot of his inspiration, they all look like those kind of amazing drawings. So that's really influenced you? It's hu hugely influenced me. I and mean, a lot and of your products now actually have a beat the beach names and everything, which I really love. Well, you, a lot of what I do is basically capturing DNA. So w the reason I became a makeup artist, one of the things is that I look at people, whether it's I'm on holiday with my friend Kate Moss, or, I'm, or I see kind of Elle McPherson, or you know, whoever it is that I'm working with, or Giselle, I'm on a photo shoot with her, and often in Ibiza. And I'll be on a beach, and I'll be looking at them, and I'll be going, God, the way that their skin looks on the boat, and it's all sun-kissed and glowing, they've got these kind of russet cheeks, we've on the boat ride, and they're kind of the sunset. And